Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and welcome to a slightly different corner of my office because this is a slightly different video. I promised you six sewing projects this year. This is one of them. To give you a little bit of an introduction, I'm here. We're going to be mostly in voiceover Judith time, uh, which is another reason that I'm sat in this kind of cushioned corner. So from the title thumbnail, I don't know what I've put in there yet because I've not made it yet, you will know that I have made a Belle inspired dress. Why Belle? Well, I'd love to say it's because she's the most bookish princess, she gets a library, she was my favourite from childhood. Not really. To be honest, I bought this blue linen ages and ages ago. I genuinely can't remember when. And I couldn't work out what it should be. And then one day I was sat there thinking, I was like, you know what this needs to be? This needs to be a bell dress. And not the yellow dress, quite obviously. The one that she wears at the beginning of the animated cartoon. And it's one of my favourite dresses. And I wanted to own something very similar. And it was a bit of a saga. Uh, and I'll be honest, I didn't get all of it on film, but I got an awful lot of it on film. So I'm hoping that you will indulge me in a little bit of sewing content and just enjoy voiceover Judith and the making of the bell dress. Okay, voiceover Judith here. So as you can see, I'm laying out my pattern pieces. I bought this pattern on the Etsy uh, and I'm using books as pattern weights because I'm iconic. Um, <laughs> here I am pinning everything down. I did have to rearrange everything because I realised I completely forgot about grain lines. So here I am squidging things about again. And there we go, chopping all the pieces out. And then here they all are. Ooh. First up, I had to mark the darts. I was using this funky chalk pen that I got given in some kind of sewing set, and it, I use it all the time. It's fantastic. Thank you, dog, for interrupting this voiceover. Uh, in order to get them onto the other side, I unpinned everything, flipped everything over, and transferred it that way, which is the best way. I hold things in my mouth because I'm a gremlin. And here we go, marking on the other side. So I was trying to show where the darts were going to go and then realised that you couldn't see the pink at all. So here are some extra lines I've added in that make it look like it's blushing. And then I did something that I don't normally do, but I should probably be more in the habit of, and I marked up on all the pieces where the front and the back are, because when I made my mock-up, I accidentally made half of it inside out, and I felt really silly. So I wanted to make sure that that wouldn't happen this time around. And here I am pinning everything together. So I'm just pinning those darts in the little triangle shapes, ready to go through the machine because it's finally time to sew. I filled up my bobbin with this lovely blue thread that I immediately ran out of and had to sew the rest of it in grey, but it looks nice on the wheel. <laughs> and we're sewing. I like to do my darts this way where I sew them up all the way to the little point uh, and I don't go back and forward I just tie it in a little knot I can't remember I think it was on a so steam video I saw that uh, and I always do it I don't always do it in frame though here we are there they go a little knot and you're done I'm actually ironing all of this but I'm doing it off camera so you can't see it but yes here's me sewing that second art these are just gonna shape around the bust I can't remember if I already said that and we are done two little darts sewn I'm just showing you it, but my arm's in the way. Here we go. Oh, look at how shapely this will be. This is actually too small for me uh, because I couldn't be bothered to size up the pattern and, and I thought it would be fine. And it was basically fine, but I probably should have sized up the pattern. Uh, and now we're going to watch as I sew everything together. There's something almost depressing about watching yourself sewing in sped up footage because this took ages, so long, and I've condensed all of it down into like a 15 minute video or less. And uh, I just want you to know this took forever. Uh, I'm sewing the back on now, so we've got kind of like the tube of the garment done. Um, and I'm going to sew the lining in next. That's the next part of this video. So here I am. I actually made the lining as my mock-up. That's what I typically do. It just means you don't have as many kind of wasted bits of fabric. So I'd made this a couple of times at this point. Uh, and here I am sewing along this edge, just getting everything lined up. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this out, which you will see momentarily, uh, and it'll all join up very nicely. But here I am showing you that it has a front and a back now. Ooh, so snazzy. Um, this is an exciting time where it took me multiple times to realise that I had not threaded my machine properly, or it had come unthreaded or something, but you just watch how many times I failed before I realised I should probably try and rethread the bottom bobbin. Uh, I would normally cut all of this out, but I was trying to leave in the realities of much of sewing is actually just fixing the machines and making them work, and trying to figure out why they've decided not to work. 
What I'm actually doing here is called um, under stitching, I think? I can't quite remember the exact word, but uh, it's basically a way of stitching that makes the lining of something lie very nicely and it means it doesn't uncrinkle and fold up and it's an annoying thing but it does make everything look nice. Here we go, I finally realised I should probably have a look and oh yes, everything's gone wrong. There, there we go, finally fixed it. Was that excruciating for you? It was for me. Just re-threading the top needle as well, just to be safe. Oh, it looks like it's gonna work. Pulling up that bottom thread, clipping it off, and preparing to sew again. And it still doesn't work, but this time it is because my fabric is in the wrong place, I'm pretty sure. So yes, try one more time, one more attempt, and then I, I think I probably would have rage quit if this didn't work. There we go. And I sew all the way around the edge, uh, making sure to turn my needle at the point where it's going to be square, because I want it to be square. I just included this bit at the end so you could have the satisfaction of me actually finishing. Hooray! <laughs> Alright, so I pulled this off because now I am going to do the sleeves, and I decided to do the sleeves by binding them off rather than rather than by doing anything else, just because I know how to do that and I think it looks nice and I knew I could sew it all to the lining. This did mean a lot more hand sewing, but it worked really well for me. I used some scraps of fabric that I had left over from a dress I'd made recently for a wedding, the one I made on a live stream, and yeah, so here I am just sewing all around the outside edge so that'll look nice. As you can see, there we go. It looks nice and stripy. It will all fold in. Uh, and I did the same for the other side because most of sewing is doing one thing, figuring out all the ways to do it wrong, and then doing it slightly better on the other side is exactly what happened here. <laughs> Uh, I then did the same understitching, if that's the wrong word I'll have to correct myself, uh, but along here so it will fold under nicely. Oh look at that, look how it folds under, ooh so nice. Yep we get it. <laughs> uh, and then I sewed it all down, so this is me after hand sewing all of those edges so it would look nice and I did get some footage of how that looked. My hand sewing's not the neatest, but I try my best. All right, this is me overlocking. I, I love my overlocker, it's a great machine. It just finishes off the edges. It makes life much easier. It was very expensive and I didn't need one, but I wanted one and I saved up and got one. So yeah, here I am just finishing off. Uh, I'm doing the side here, which will make the zip a lot nicer to fit in. Uh, and then I think I went and did the bottom of both pieces, which just made it easier to sew everything together at the end. Um, but there's just a little knife that chops off any stray bits uh, and a whole bunch of threads, four threads there, that, that enclose all of the edges and make everything look a little bit nicer. I don't know why I included all of this, but I did! <laughs> oh, this is me finishing off. Normally I just leave these to look terrible, but I actually finished this off because I was feeling like I ought to do it properly. Oh, there we go, a top! So now it's the skirt, and I decided to do a full circle skirt on this, which for me won't fit on one piece of fabric. And I did already have a circle skirt pattern, but I needed to make it a little bit longer. So here I am tracing off the pattern and just adding a little bit onto the edge. If this looks crop weird, it's because you could see my butt in a lot of this footage, so I had to crop it in a way that you wouldn't wouldn't have that vision, because I don't think YouTube would allow it. So yes, pushed that up uh, and kept on going, kept on scribbling out. I bought this pattern paper ages and ages ago, and I've used it all the time. It's one of the most useful things I've purchased. You can also see the, the general mess that my living, not my living room, my office is becoming. Traced that off, drew it up a little bit neater, there we go, uh, and there we go, because again I realised you couldn't see that at all, so I'm just cut out that shape that I'm going to stick onto the bottom so that I can more easily have a long thing. Sorry again if you can hear the dog. And I tape that on, I only tape it on half because then I can still use the other half, thank you Luna, to uh, make a shorter skirt if I want to. But there we go. And here's me throwing all the skirt panels I cut into a big pile because I didn't film myself cutting them out and I was annoyed at myself. And some pockets! Uh, and this is me filming how hot it was because it was very warm in my office. Uh, and that's why I didn't film myself sewing all the skirt panels together, which I'm showing you here after I've pinned them all to the bodice so I can sew it together. Uh, an ongoing theme of this section, I didn't film any of it. <laughs> Ooh, but it will be a skirt, look! But what I did clip is me 
I wanted to film me overlocking all of the pockets and the skirt seams because it's really satisfying uh, when you get overlocking right. But uh, little did I know that much like my machine, my overlocker had become unthreaded. So this doesn't work. And I realize it in just a second. There I go realizing that that didn't work. Why didn't it work, I wonder? It's probably nothing and I should just try again. Huh. But no, uh, I did have to unthread the entire overlocker and rethread everything because it all got tangled up. Uh, and this, uh, here I'm trying to do it myself with just my memory of what you're meant to do. Uh, every single time I try and do this without thinking about it, I fail and I have to look up the video. So in a second, I'm gonna give up, look up the video and rethread the overlocker that way. But again, just including this to give you a bit of the realities. I think this meant, I think this was meant to be about a five minute job and it ended up taking, I'm gonna say maybe 45 minutes because of how much faff I had to do rethreading complicated machines. But finally, I did manage it, and here is me putting, I think, a test piece through, and then a big old skirt seam. Because you see what I mean? Like, it's very satisfying just seeing it get pulled through, and it makes everything just so much neater. Uh, okay, here I am attaching the skirt and the bodice, uh, just along that top edge, which basically is the point where it goes from being easy to manage to being an actual nightmare, because there's so much fabric to get under the machine. But look, here's me showing you that it is now basically a dress. So, to be perfectly honest with you, um, at this point I stopped filming, uh, and it was because I had to do the zips, and the big side seams, and all of the skirt stuff, and everything kept going wrong, and I was annoyed, and also I had slightly told myself that I was going to finish the dress for the weekend, which was one day away, which was very unrealistic. So I stopped filming uh, because I was angry and upset. And sometimes that just happens, and you're going to have to live with the fact that you're not going to witness me in the dark, feeling very hot, not accomplishing my goals. I'm terribly sorry about it. But that does mean we can skip to the reveal. So here is the dress hanging up. Uh, fun fact, this is actually before I had to make a whole bunch of changes because I sewed in the lining slightly wrong. But I thought I would show you what it looked like. Nobody look at how messy my office is in the background. Shh, it's fine. Here is the hem. It's a little bit of a messy hem, but uh, to be honest, circle skirt hems usually are. Uh, and this is the inside. I always find it really interesting to look at the inside of things that I've finished. Note those pockets. Uh, you'll find out more about those later. Uh, look at the zip. You can see all those overlocked edges where I've not finished it off. All that hand stitching that just goes around the top. I could do that by machine. I've never managed it. And also, as you can see, I did it slightly unevenly and had to go back in and redo it all because it looked really weird. But here's me wearing it. Look at me walking around my garden in pusheen themed socks. Oh, how beautiful. Uh, as you can see, I sew the pockets in backwards, so they work if you always walk with your hands behind your back. You can shunt them forward, it'll hold a phone, but I'm living out my Disney princess fantasy. Look at me, picturing the person I will meet in chapter three. Here we go. I thought I would try it with this corset top that I made. I really like the look of that. This is a vintage blouse that I love, that I thought it would look cute with, with a colour. Here's me wearing a jumper. This is probably how I'll actually wear it because I run very cold. But this winter, I will probably also wear another jumper and maybe a blanket. I had so much fun making this. It was wonderful. I hope you have enjoyed this little trip down a sewing avenue. I'll be honest, this video was a nightmare to film. People who make sewing videos full time are icons. Uh, we should all send them even more support than we already do. Uh, I, I just had such a hard time because I don't think I planned enough. It's fine. I'm really, really happy with how the dress came out. Uh, I'm quite pleased with how the video came out. I've not finished editing it yet. As you can tell, I'm filming this. But I had a good time. And next, I think I'm going to do something a little bit more home decor-esque. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. It is still going to be reading related a little bit home decor-esque. And yeah, that's what I've been up to on my hiatus. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. If you have a Disney or otherwise dress that you would love to recreate one day, please let me know that as well. Regular bookish content will resume on Monday with Overbooked. We are back reviewing all of the things, so if you're excited for that, please do let me know. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated, especially after all of this time. It just lets YouTube know, oh, she's back.
You can also check out my Discord, which is down in the description, and my Patreon if you would like to be a person who supports the channel. They are wonderful, wonderful human beings, and I appreciate them very much. Thank you so much for watching. That's all from me, and I will see you in the next one.